Look out. Hey guys, yeah. I hope you are well. You are back on my channel. And I did notice actually before I'm going to say, I have said, hey guys, and somebody pulled me up on it the other day. So I've done it again. I'm sorry. I'm going to say hello, everyone, just in case we're uh, we're annoying any guys and girls out there. Today, um, I have dragged on a friend of mine who wrote this. This is Solo, How to Work Alone and Not Lose Your Mind. Now, this book is by the fancy Rebecca Seal that's here. <laughs> and uh, was not written for COVID, despite what you might think. This was done a long time before that. Uh, it just happened to come out at the right time, didn't it, Rebecca? Yeah, weirdly, so weird. Weirdly, <laughs> perfectly. So uh, how me and Rebecca met was, Rebecca was gonna interview me. I forgot what you were actually gonna interview. Was it just for the book? Yeah, originally? it was for the book, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just for the book. And then it ended up being a longer chat and I have a lovely place in the book, which is great, <laughs> I'm very happy. Um, but then um, it's obviously taken off really well for you and I think it's great. So I wanted to, to kind of give people the support that we can to help them kind of work from home and do their thing. And, and this is a great book. So I thought we'd get you on and have a chat and this will be the first of many. So first and foremost, how are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Thanks very much. I'm very aware that I look quite tired. I am quite <laughs> tired, I'm, <laughs> but I'm fine. <laughs> Good. And, and since the book has launched, how has your life been? Weird. Yeah, unexpected, definitely. I mean, when when I got the book deal, I remember my agent saying to me, this is a book that will, um, you know, sell a few hundred copies a year. It's going to be a really useful thing for freelancers and people will buy it for people when they go freelance or get start their self-employed business. And, um, you know, and you'll update it every few years with more information and it will be just a really great thing to have done. And I, and I was totally happy with that. That was exactly, you know, what I wanted. I wanted it to be useful. Um, I don't actually know how many copies it's sold, but I do know that it's selling in America, Australia, New Zealand. It's been translated into six other languages so far. And I keep getting new emails from the agency saying, oh, it's going to be in Romanian or Hungarian or Korean, um, which wow. is a complete shock and definitely, definitely nothing that any of us had kind of anticipated. So, um, yeah, I can only assume that it's useful um, and that people are really kind of finding stuff in it which is helping them and yeah I get emails and messages on Instagram and things from people saying thank you for writing it and I I, I guess I wrote it because I needed it I wrote it because I couldn't find it I uh, mm -hmm. wrote it <laughs> I wrote it <laughs> because I, uh, I because there wasn't anything six years ago when I had the idea there just wasn't anything out there for people who are working by themselves there weren't really any resources. There's a lot more now. Um, and that ended up turning into the idea that if I couldn't find it, then I should probably make it. And um, so this is all very unexpected. <laughs> I love it. I remember chatting to you the first time when we spoke and the idea of the book, I thought, well, that's so great. Why has nobody already done that? You know, it's yeah, just like such right? an obvious thing to do, yeah. but they're the best places for you to sit in. And obviously then with a, a global pandemic and everyone having to work from home, it just happens to play into, <laughs> play into the title of the book. So yeah. how, how was that in terms of like, when you realized we'd all have to be, you know, working from home, did you think that was gonna have an effect on the book or did you think, oh, that's kind of apt or what were your thoughts? Well, I was still writing it. So I finished writing it in the first lockdown. Um, mm. It wasn't due to be out until now, April 2021. So I had this rather lucky experience of finishing the, the, the writing process and then saying to the publisher, do you think we could bring it out sooner? And they were the ones who had to scramble and kind of go crazy to try and bring it out more quickly. Whereas I didn't have to do that. And um, I just did the process as I would have done it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah i i didn't expect it i changed the preface and the um and the afterword to reflect the fact that i was writing it in the middle of a global pandemic um but i didn't want to change too much really because i wanted i felt like the idea it, itself was good um and I didn't want it to become a pandemic book. I was aware that other people were writing other books really quickly to try and provide people with support. And mm -hmm. while those ones are, are great, I just didn't I didn't want to be part of that particular gang um, because I felt like I wanted it to have a longer life because the whole point was that it was meant to support people throughout mm -hmm. their careers. Um, so yeah, I didn't want it to be too coronavirus-y as it were. <laughs> coronavirus-y, yeah. No, we don't want anything to be too coronavirus-y, no. do we? <laughs> So in terms of like the feedback that you've been getting for this book and obviously how it's been implemented into people's lives, what's the sort of general consensus that you're getting back from everyone that's reading it? Um, I think that the majority of people have 
basically messaged to say I feel seen, um, which is quite powerful anyway. Mm. Just uh, just the fact that we don't really talk when we work by ourselves, whether you work for an organisation or or for yourself. When we work by ourselves, we don't tend to kind of communicate a lot of our emotional interior life with other people mm. and. That was certainly one of the motivating factors for me to write the book because I felt that very strongly. I felt very, very lonely. So I think that one of the things it's done is created a kind of <clears throat> like an invisible community. And that's why I've started um, a podcast as well called The Solo Collective. And nice. I did that because I wanted to kind of make make more of that community. I wanted to continue having the conversations in the book, but I also wanted to say to more people, you're not, you're not actually on your own and your experience mm. isn't entirely singular. Um, there's a lot of other people who are kind of struggling with the same stuff. And if we all talk about it a bit more, then maybe we can navigate it a bit more clearly. So so that's been quite extraordinary to feel part of something bigger like mm -hmm. that has been really, yeah, that's been a huge change because that's just not how I've worked historically at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're, from speaking to you from the first time I spoke to you, you're used to kind of changing on a dime, you know, like just being able to turn and just go, I need to go that way, I need to go that way. You're yeah. Quite I feel you're quite intuitive and you just go with whatever's flowing, you know, in that direction. And you might feel a little bit crazy in that, but obviously it's leading you onto something. It led you into the right direction of, of yeah. bringing this book out now yeah. as well. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, you have to cultivate ability when you work by yourself, I think, um, particularly if you're freelance, um, like I am. And you have a different, I mean, I've got so many different strands to my career, like you. Um, and because half of what I do is writing about food, half of what I do is writing cookbooks. Like, I don't have anything in the kind of personal development world normally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of turning on a dime. There's a lot. It's a good phrase. <laughs> I'm going to get that on a t shirt. Yeah, you, you fit it. You fit it so well. So, in terms of how you, you know, the stuff that you went through in terms of like changing a bit of direction with the book. I know when we chatted, it was meant to be, you were meant to be interviewing me for, I think it was like 20 minutes or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, and it ended up being like an hour or so. It was like session, you were coaching yeah. me, basically. Yeah, I ended yeah. up coaching you. But um, I loved it because of how willing and adaptive you were and how you were like, oh, maybe that and maybe that. And that's the best thing for somebody that's coaching is somebody hears what you say and applies it and it's really useful. Because um, mm. a lot of people don't necessarily do that. We hear stuff and then we're like, oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. And then we just keep on walking and it doesn't quite right. sink in. But you, yeah. you lapped it up. And I remember you just saying, oh, my God, I need to this, I need to this. And it was just your excitement around your own journey. That, for me, told me that this book was going to have energy because you were already super excited and you were genuinely involved, um, yeah. which is nice because not every author is like that. They, It's kind of like they're doing it because they want to have a book. And right. they don't really yeah. know, they're just choosing a subject, but you were living this experience of, you know, like, it's almost like how not to kill yourself. You were like, oh my God, I could do this and I've got stress here. And you, but you were really wanting to solve the problem for yourself, which was so important. Yeah. And that's, I think, for a lot of people out there are, you know, with lockdown and with their pressure, people have questioned everything in life. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, do I actually want to do the job that I'm in? Am mm -hmm. I in the right partnership? God, I regret living in an apartment right now. Do I want kids? Do I want to be dating on a dating app? Do I want, you know, like every question has been brought up to the surface. Mm -hmm. And I think even though you've only been writing cookbooks in the past, having a book that talks about, you know, working from home, whether you, whatever you do, is, is such an important question these days because work became life and life became yeah. work. And then, you know, work area became family area and family yeah. area became dinner area. No one was allowed out. And it's just put everything on a on a hot point of questions. Yeah, yeah, somebody else put it better than I. I keep saying to people that working from home in 2020 and 2021 is not working from home. Someone else put it better and said that we're not working from home, we're living at work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, that's that's really pertinent in terms yeah. of the way that this experience has been different to other experiences of mm -hmm. self-employment or, or freelancing or remote work or whatever, which is that there hasn't been an escape route. And I think that's why all those questions have bubbled up to the surface because mm -hmm. we haven't, It's a, you know, even for me, I've been working um, on my own and from home for 12 years. Even for me, it was an entirely different experience over the mm -hmm. last year because normally you'd have all of these kind of pressure release valves like socialising and holidays and stuff. However, like given that, that all of that stuff has been really, really difficult, I would also say that it's been like 
uh, I guess to take the pressure um, analogy a bit further, it's been a bit like a pressure cooker. And in that sense, some good stuff has come out of it because without being able to kind of um, disappear into your social life or kind of um, uh, be so busy that you can't really think of anything else mm -hmm. this last year. I mean, I've had exactly the same experience. I've asked a lot of questions and thought a lot about what I want for my life and where I want it to go and be and all that stuff. Um, I think that's happened because we haven't been able to disappear off into other bits of life and, and kind of park questions. It's, mm. If there's nothing else to do, your brain does tend to think. <laughs> yeah. <Over -think>. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's, there's another T-shirt there, overthinking T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. And it's the way I feel that, you know, lockdown, for me personally, it was a very beautiful time. And it's really hard to say that. So many people are like, what? But I had such a transformative time. You know, I built a radio station. I was working mm. on a TV channel built and changed my business in different ways, reevaluated where I already was, but I'm single with no kids. And I was, I was like, as soon as lockdown hit, I was like, I'm going to go and live at my mum and dad's for a bit and spend more time with them and get to know them better and have more fun. And, and I ticked off a load of boxes that I wouldn't have necessarily done if there was stuff to do mm. in life. There was mm. places to go and people to see. Um, so I'm very well aware of the luxuries that I had and which also made me more grateful because not everyone had those luxuries. I was speaking to some people and they were you know, living with three kids in an apartment and in abusive relationships. Mm. It, and it was so hard. So like my whole awareness of, of lockdown and other people's lives and how grateful I am really sank in. Um, and I just think working from home also, I needed to say, right, there's a few things that I need to look at if I'm working from home. One is how long can I actually stare at a laptop for without getting a migraine? Mm -hmm. um, what's the chair like? You know, do yeah. I have a window? You know, all these tiny little questions were extra things, but they could make such a massive difference. Yeah. And I feel like from your perspective, from your your book as well, it's like, you know, it was perfectly timed because of the situation that you get into is that the, the friends had gone, the distractions had gone. So mm -hmm. all your book, I don't believe it, really that it could have been absorbed as well as it has now in the sense like I just it was just perfect yeah because it was the biggest question on everyone's mind yes <laughs> so you just yeah, how do it. I do this how do I do this that's what everybody was thinking yeah. yeah and also I think because a lot of people and and I think it's a conversation I'm having with a lot of people at the moment um I've been doing workshops and things with um individuals and organizations and it's been interesting to see that people are kind of they've had like a, a micro version of the experience I had over over the first six years of working by myself you just you just put your head down and you just work and work and work and work and work and then at some point and I think for a lot of people it's after this first year of, of craziness they sort of look up and go wait is this how I wanted it does this make any sense mm -hmm. um you know that and you're at you find you're at the dining table on a really uncomfortable chair and you know or or you're just or you're in the basement or you're in the loft or I know somebody who works in a cupboard um, I mean, she's hiding from her children, but she literally works in a cupboard. And it's just like, we wow. have to think about this stuff a little bit more carefully, you know, because there, yeah. there are really big mental health implications to making those choices. And and it took me a lot longer. It took me six years to kind of put my head up and think, oh, wait, hang on. This isn't mm. actually what I want my life to look like. Um, so I'm, you know, in a way, it's good that people are doing it a bit more quickly. But I think that's why some of the stuff's being, uh, as you say, absorbed by people more more readily than it might be, because not just is it a kind of meta experience that so many people are going through, but also there's this kind of there's this marker, this passing of a year, mm -hmm. which forces you in a way to kind of what did I take do stock? Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Totally. So you just said you're doing workshops. What sort of workshops are you doing? um so basically the same as the title of the book so it's kind of okay. how, how to how to work by yeah. yourself um so yeah it'll be things like how... <laughs> yeah. yeah this is what you need to get Thank go you. for it um so yeah things like how to create a brain and body friendly working environment for yourself mm -hmm. um yeah how to cope things like um I mean you'll laugh because you knew that from our conversation I wasn't very good at boundary setting but um boundary setting and how to um how yeah so a lot of what I talk about is is how to create things like transitional rituals mm. where you kind of fake a commute not by actually going out and faking your commute but creating things which help your brain to move from one mode to another which is something mm. that human brains are really quite quite struggle with 
really quite bad at and we struggle with mm. um so yeah it's that kind of thing which is lovely actually and sometimes they're to really huge audiences and sometimes they're to like three people <laughs> and it's it's just really it's not I mean it just depends on the organization and what they what they want um yeah but sometimes it's really intense I don't know I feel I feel a bit as though I should go off and get a coaching qualification or something because I every now and then I wonder if I'm kind of floundering at the edges and not exactly know what I'm doing but um, you know what it's interesting that you say that there's a, I know a lot of coaches that are terrible at giving workshops even though they've been trained and I know some <laughs> that have never been trained that are the best teachers and it's it's about how you deliver and how it's received rather than the certificate you got along the way a lot of these certificates there's obviously a method and a practice like obviously in terms of making sure you give the right kind of advice if you yeah. are giving advice but coaching is where you don't usually give advice and teaching is where you kind of do give advice because that's what yeah. people are coming for your wisdom and you've already got the book you've already got the wisdom yeah so yeah I guess I guess that's true I guess that's true I just want to yeah I just really strongly want to do right by anyone who's kind of listening so exactly. um yeah I, there's an yeah. amazing mental health first aid course that I'll plug and promote from uh, from the guys at we are hummingbird I'll give you the details after this oh thank you, you. might love it because it's just it's so good it fills in all the little blanks and I think it's uh, to be honest I think every person on the planet should be doing this course but it's a really cool uh, way into around mental health and just to see what the triggers are and what you know because we can't yeah. help everyone but if we can see the triggers and the guidelines then we can direct in the right way and that might just be enough for you to feel like you've you've got yeah. what you need that's yeah. what I worry about that I'm something or say the wrong thing or um you know that I'll trigger somebody or whatever and just not just not know what I'm doing so that would be really helpful thank you yeah yeah that would, no that I will do that soothe my mind <laughs> good so do is there any more books coming to the forefront or is this just the, the I don't know I mean I've got another couple of cookbooks coming out but that's um that's a whole different that's a whole different world um yeah. I'd like to definitely I do have a little idea bubbling away um but it's it's something I feel like I want to I want to think about carefully. I'm not sure mm. that there's a sort of that there's a follow up exactly um, mm. in terms of I don't know if there's it's not that there's not much more to say about working by yourself. But I'm not sure. I don't. The thing I really didn't want the book to be was kind of how to do spreadsheets and um, you know how to arrange your tax and stuff because yeah. I just I'm not very good at that. <laughs> um, and yeah. it's really important stuff, but it's not kind of it's not my it's not my strength not your um, area well no I always felt my area was kind of um trying to understand complex information and then distilling it in a way that was communicable I mean that's what I do in my journalism work so that yeah. was that was always what it was going to be I'd love to be somebody who was really organized and had spreadsheets for everything but it just that just hasn't manifested <laughs> <laughs> hasn't happened for most people when I do the workshops that I've got you know they're called unfuck your life for a reason and people are like oh my god this is so simple but they they come with this idea that they're going to be told they need to do spreadsheets all the time and I'm like let's yeah just well, we've got one spreadsheet that you need for your finances beyond that yeah you don't really need them you can have one for your boundaries if you want to look at it clearly instead of just a normal piece of paper but no yeah. we're not here to be on our a game 24 7 we're here to no. like we have flow in the discipline and yeah. to enjoy it otherwise it gets a bit too scary but yeah uh, yeah. yeah so um I have got this and I highly recommend everyone go and read it not just because I'm in it and I'm getting a little mention <laughs> uh, because I think it's really good and obviously it's the time right now and hopefully there's no more lockdown in the way that it was before if there is hello go and get it, go and get it, go and get it. um and I'll put the link in below from here but is there anything you want to add or you want to let people know or you want to add on the end of this before we go no, not really. I mean, I'd love it if people wanted to listen to the Solo Collective because I think it's as useful as the stuff in the book. Um, and I guess it covers a few other things. And one of the things that I found really interesting, in fact, it's the episode that's going out today. Um, she says, dropping a plug. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I hadn't I hadn't planned this. Um, one of the women that I've interviewed, um, Jennifer Petrolieri, um, I hope I haven't just mangled her name. Uh, she specialises in relationships and work and mm -hmm. particularly in couples. Uh, and well in households actually to be to be fairer and so I've really enjoyed kind of extending the conversations about stuff like that like how to manage the relationships that you have um, around your work not the people you work with but the people mm -hmm. who are around you when you're working yeah I hadn't really thought about any of that stuff before That's so 
interesting yeah. angle. Definitely. It's massive, and it, but it, but why hasn't anyone thought about it? I mean, obviously she is, but why isn't it? This, why isn't that something that's kind of taught? And yeah. you know, why isn't all this stuff taught at school? Like, why are we not preparing people better? Exactly. Um, anyway, that's a much that's a much bigger. That's, um, that's why I'm doing. I am sound with the with the whole personal development and corporate membership. All of those areas is what we're covering, and it just because this stuff should have been taught at school, but it wasn't. Yeah. it wasn't part of the should've... agenda. Call it an age generation thing, or a or a maybe it was done on purpose thing. So we all walked around like headless chickens. I don't know. <laughs> But what we have right now is a load of people that wished they'd had that education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and are scrambling to catch up. I mean, I think that's the positive thing is that there's a huge appetite for understanding. Um, yeah. And, you know, like like you said, I was when I was writing the book, like, okay, well, what do I need to do? How can I, t you know, I n something yeah. has to change. What can I do? So, yeah, that was that was that was massive but thank you so much for having me here no, it's been it's, such a it was always going to happen at some point it was <laughs> uh yeah we've waited for loads of other interviews that I've had and then obviously sending you the message the other day and you were like do you want to do that interview and I'm like still need to do it so yes we've got it done. <laughs> thank you so much so for everyone else at home you can go and get this how to work alone and not lose your mind and uh, we'll put the link underneath and I'll also put the link to the membership or the group that you uh, sorry the podcast isn't it not a group I'm thinking you've got a group but it is kind of <laughs> one, day. one day one day I will maybe that maybe that was I was meant to say that and maybe that's your new direction you know. well that was the original idea for the solo collective that we would create a kind of networking organization for people who work by themselves so that we weren't mm -hmm. by ourselves but then covid <laughs> and i was like right we need yes. to think yeah it's slightly well, differently it'll get there it'll get we'll there get so there. thank you very much and uh, we're going to have you back on doing stuff in the membership area of i am sound so you'll probably see rebecca again somehow um but if anybody's got any questions please do reach out you can put them in the comments don't forget that we have the radio station 24 7 radio station for i am sound and um, we also have amazon roku and apple tv for i am sound as well and i'll be back on youtube the next time i feel like it rather than having a pressure or a work schedule it will be when i feel the flow thanks for tuning in Five, five now. Rebecca, you stay Hi. there. Everyone else at home. See you later. Bye.